You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. to the extension hour uh we're here with uh, bob daly how are you doing today good good yourself An- another beautiful day it seems like every time we meet it's a beautiful day outside. it is gorgeous out there uh today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, spring gardening uh, uh lately we know we've seen a, a lot of things uh, both on your end and my end with you know diseases and lawn problems and, and things like that and, sure you know yeah we've seen a lot of that yeah you know and I, I just you know remind our guests you know you can go to fm uh 104.5 and, and 106.1, or if you want to listen live, you can go to IRLoneStar.com as well if you want to sit there at your, your desk and, and, and enjoy some uh, some gardening information. Um, you know, let, let's kind of start off. You know, I've, I've had a lot of stuff go on this week, and I, I know that you have too. You know, what, what are some of the things that you're seeing in kind of the, in, in like in the woodlands area? And well, stuff like that? we're seeing, a, a, you know, people complaining about grass problems and lawn problems. Uh, and you know, I sent you a couple of pictures on, and you know, I think a lot of it. I don't know. You tell me, but a lot of it has been, you know, just a lot of inf- misinformation out there that, yeah, you know, things like weed and feed and stuff like that. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, the, the, I, I've seen some where it has impacted even the trees. Um, really, and a lot. Yeah, there's there's been a couple where. Uh, They'll have a tree and it's just not leafed out yet, and the grass underneath it is completely yellow, and and you can tell that it's very patterned after mm-hmm. somebody you know putting out a, you know a, an adequate amount of, of product. Sure, obviously uh, that it stunted the tree's growth, that, so it's causing an issue there, and so that that has led to other things like um, slime mold. Um, excuse me, not slime mold, slime flux, which is okay. a bubbly, oozy fermented smell that will actually ooze out of the tree it's like a foamy little thing that okay out of the bark down. coming out yeah, yeah. and uh-huh. it kind of just you know kind of goes down some of that has happened um, but what it does is it I mean, it turns that grass almost this neon oh wow yeah you know yeah it, see it in the dark right? yeah it's yeah exactly you can see it in the dark you know it, just don't come home till dark and you won't worry about it right um <laughs> it's one of those um but yeah you know you've got that going on and people are saying, "Oh, you know, it's the product. It, it, the product's the problem. The product's not the problem, right? It, it's it's when it was applied, and, and typically it's just lack of knowledge to read that yes. label, right? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we in extension, we don't necessarily recommend uh, weed and feed products, and there's a reason why we don't recommend it. Our reasoning is the time in which you treat weeds is different from the time of fertilization." So you treat your weeds early. Early, yeah, late February, uh-huh. mid to late February, uh, for a pre-emergent herbicide, and then you fertilize not till even mid-April at some point. Sure. You know? So yeah. it's two different time frames. Now, now the deal with I, I was just attending a, one of our kind of little turf grass conferences recently, and um, they were talking about the weed and feed products, and it's not just one company in particular; it's all of them. They they have a formulation. Uh, with that formulation, they have uh, some fast release, some slow release to go with it. Right. And then, of course, the product. Um, and, of course, you know, they have recommendations of how much you put out and everything else, but how do we really know how much to put out unless we have a soil test performed? That's one of the major things. Right. Um, but that, that weed and feed product, you know, you can sit there and it'll work in some areas but not others. It just depends. Mm-hmm. The, the thing is is that when that fertilizer is put out, the turf grass is not actively growing. So you're feeding the weeds, basically, exactly. huh? Exactly. Yeah. You're feeding the weeds. So you're killing the old ones and, yep. and promoting the new ones yes. that are coming out. Yeah, my, my wife showed me a post one night. There there was a gentleman in, in the neighborhood that we live in. And, right. And uh, he posted a picture of the product and said, this killed my entire lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the color of the bag, and I knew automatically. I was like, right. yeah, there's a reason why. Yeah. You got to read that label. You got to know what you have, you know. And things like that. Um, there's a product out there that, that's, and most of the companies are straying away from it in some cases. But the, the product is atrazine. Atrazine. Okay. It is a good product. It is mm-hmm. effective as a pre-emerge. Um, but it also says don't apply that product after temperatures reach a certain degree, which is about okay. 88 degrees and above. Right. So when it gets consistently that 
temperature range, it can it can cause adverse effects on lawns. So late February would be a good time to mid February, late right. February. Right. So you know it, it's proper use. Uh, sure. A lot of times it's 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 what does we say ninety eight percent of misuse is actually done by homeowners. You know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you know it, it's it's one of those things that occurs and and you know it, it goes back to that same thing. We need to read the labels. Right. Uh, those products are out there and they are tools for us to use. Uh, and I'm not discouraging that if you've used it for years and you and you haven't had any issues, then then fine. But just do it at the proper time. Right. Uh, don't don't wait too long and and wait till it's too too hot. Uh, just know that if you're applying the fertilizer too early, you're actually wasting money. <laughs> right. That's that's so our you point. should get if you want to do it, mm -hmm. get some atrazine or something else. Yeah. Apply, apply it earlier, then get some fertilizer yeah. and put it on mid-April or yeah. something like that. Just use those products at the right time. That's, that's right. the right. I know when I was before I became a master gardener, you know, I thought that if a pound of fertile a uh, pound of chem uh, chemicals of pesticides was great, mm -hmm. then two pounds would be greater, right? <laughs> right. So I just that's kind of how I figured things, you know, until I yeah. till, till you told me different. So. Yeah, and well, and you know, it that's that goes with insecticides and everything else. That's all been researched. We know you know what the appropriate amounts are and, that, and that's what those labels are for sure uh, and you know a lot of people uh, you know coming from where i came from they would always blame the farmers you know right and the farmers are he heavily regulated and, and well not only that labels. but they're looking at at bottom line mm -hmm. so they're not going to over right. use their products because yeah. it's expensive right it, well you know the other thing is too and I, I was thinking about today as i was looking through some of those those grass posts right um, yeah. and i was thinking you know it's funny because, and it's one of those, those next door app, okay? And I'm, I'm right. looking through it, and I'm looking at some of the responses, and, and people are, we're all experts in something. Okay? Sure, yeah. And, and I'm looking, and, you know, everybody says, well, it could be this, it could be that, it could be this. And I'm thinking from my end, give me a piece of grass, let me look, number one, is it brown patch? Right. And I have a systematic protocol I go through to document what it is. Right. You know, and sometimes I can just look and know that quick. I know. But that's my job. That. Yeah. yeah, you've identified some <laughs> right. for me like that. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it's and it's funny just to kind of watch. And I've, I've not ever really gotten on to those, any of those places and just kind of jumped out there. And, right. And, uh, you know, I just got to the point where it's like, you know, I've got to say something. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't understand and know that extension's there to help you. You know, we're not trying to sell you a product. So we're actually trying to save you money. Right. You know, and, and save the environment. Save the environment and, yeah, and have beautiful uh, flowers and yeah. great vegetables. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people, in fact, uh, I was recently talking to one of the, the commercial nurseries around here, and, and he was saying, you know, I always tell people that, you know, the, the, the hort agent over here, he never waters his lawn or fertilizes. And I was like, yeah. And it, and yeah, my, my I don't lawn, either. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> my lawn looks great, you know. That's right, it, yeah. And in 10 years from now, it's going to look that way, too. That's right. You know, uh, yeah. but, you know, there, there's, yeah, I mean, at some point in time, you know, associations kick in and say you have to maintain your lawn or at least, a, you know, a, a visual appearance. Sure. Um, you know, yeah, I'll get out there and if it's in the heat of the summer and, yeah, I start to realize the grass is kind of folding up a little bit, it looks drought stressed, yeah, I'll hand water. That's what I do exactly. That's all yeah. it's going to be. Yeah. yeah, just with a hose head, a uh, hose, and just hose it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yep. agree. Um, the uh, I know one of the things that uh, that I see a lot is you know chemical damage on on lawns. That, uh, I sent you a picture the other day, you know, but uh, I see a lot of chemical damage, and people say, "Well, it's take all patch or mm -hmm. something else," but it could be a gas spill, or, mm -hmm. or maybe they spilled too much pesticides or fertilizer, or something. Maybe they have like a neighbor that doesn't like them. Maybe, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Urea on the lawn. <laughs> right. I, uh, we actually did look at some photos and everything of uh, where they had some damage to the leaf surface. Uh -huh. And what it was, is some of those products say, make sure your grass is wet and then water right after. Right. Well, a lot of people are expecting rain, so they go put it out and they leave it there and then water it a couple of days later. Well, the damage is already done because that, that, that high nitrogen has hit that, that leaf surface. Right. And then it causes it to burn. So you can actually get fertilizer burn just on an individual leaf in spots. Without watering it in. And even if they do think, if I think it's going to rain, I should water it in anyway. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and, and controlling that water is another thing. You know, we, we always talk about cycle soak. Right, you know, yeah. You know, water to a point before runoff. Right. And then turn it off, let it go cycle through the end system, and then come back and water it again so that so it penetrates down. 
um, you can control how far fertilizer goes down in your soil by doing a proper watering. Is that true? Okay, well, it's amazing, yeah. <laughs> because I yep. know that cycle and soak, you know, that capillary action will pull that, pull that water down right. if you run it in cycles. Yeah, and, it, and if you water too much and you, you basically overwater, what happens is that nutrient goes where? It leaches out. It goes out into the right. storm sewers or in the ditch. Yep. Yeah, or, or past the root system where it doesn't utilize. Or past the root system, yeah. So, yeah, and, and so that, that's another thing that, that happens. And, you know, we see that regularly, and that's, that's basically wasted money. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of that turf grass stuff going on right now. And, and unfortunately, you know, some of these products, they are uh, kind of damaging in that sense. They can, sure. if they're applied at the wrong time at the wrong rates, they can damage something. So, you know, and, and to most of our listeners out there, you know, it, it's, I don't want to say it's a, an exact science, but it's pretty darn close when it comes to me. <laughs> right. Like we can figure it out. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, I know that when I send you stuff over there, you know, you pretty well know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And and I encourage people to get in touch with the master gardeners at their you yeah. know, master gardener number. And exactly. if they can't answer it, you can. Yep, that's right. Um, you know, that that's one of the things I think when we come back from this little break here, uh, we'll probably, you know, talk a little bit about uh, some of the other things involved with, you know, uh, environmental issues that, sure. that are causing some of these things. Uh, a lot of people don't think about it, but it's something that kind of needs to be considered. So. Um, you're listening to the Extension Hour. Uh, my name is Michael Potter, and I'm here with Bob Daly. I uh, really thank you for joining me as usual. Uh, if you're listening to either 104.5 or 106.1, IRLonStar.com, Community Radio. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Welcome welcome back to the Extension Hour. I'm Michael Potter. I'm here with Bob Daly. Hi Mike. How did it go? We and we we're doing good today. We've got a beautiful, beautiful weather day as usual and it is gorgeous. Yeah. I, I'm sorry we're inside. We're, <laughs> I know. We're we're either garden. Do this outside? Yeah, no, it's all right. We just take it on outside, take the microphone. That'd be good. Uh, y'all are listening to Extension Hour. It's 104.5 FM or 106.1. Uh, or if you're listening uh, live on the internet there, it's IRLoneStar.com. And, uh, you know, we're, we're talking a little bit about uh, some of the problems people are experiencing with their lawns and, and landscapes, you know, plants and things around their house. And uh, we're just going to kind of talk about some of the other things that are, that are issues. And, and a lot, what a lot of people don't realize is how much weather a couple of months ago, that big freeze today. in January? Yeah, that big yeah. freeze, yeah. And, you know, people say, oh, yeah, we had a freeze? <laughs> yeah. Well, I know for a fact because I had a pipe actually pop, you know, and yeah. I had to break brick apart to get to it. So. Yep. Um, but, you know, 36 hours of 32 or below. That's cold. That's cold. Okay. That's right. And I live out by the lake. Right. So you got, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, you know it, it gets a little warmer out there, but that's, that's, I mean, that's what I calculated just at my house. And I live pretty close to the lake, and, you know, it was cold. I lost some stuff. Yeah, I have too. I have ginger plants in my shade area that are just now starting to emerge. Mine, <laughs> mine too. Mine, exactly. That's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, and that, that should have happened, you know, a while back. Yep. Um, you know, things are just behind, yep. um, unfortunately. Because and of I, that one yeah. reason. I know I lost all my broccoli. Yeah. Well, broccoli is supposed to it's last supposed to be... <laughs> below 20 degrees. Exactly. So all my broccoli died, yep. so... Yeah, and, and you know, and that, that turf grass. Yeah, I saw some cool stuff, and I showed you a picture. Yeah, of the that break was there. fantastic. Yeah, frost injury on turf grass is really cool. It kind of has a brain pattern to it. Yeah, it's brown and green, brown and green, and it just kind of looks like a maze almost. It's, yeah, and, it's and, really kind of yeah. beautiful to look yeah. at. Yeah, but it's I know it's damaging to the lawn. Leopard, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it is cool looking, and but it did damage that turf grass. Right, and and so. When that happens, that turf grass is not going to respond in the spring like a healthy, you know, if we have a, I don't want to say normal, but a, a right. more consistent winter pattern, uh, that that grass would be a lot further along. 
So how would you solve that that freeze problem in grass? Yeah, it will primarily at the, at the front end of that freeze. Right. It would have been just to make sure that your grass has some moisture in it. Water it. Yeah, water it. Insulation. That's what we you know tell you you know before right. before we have a freeze, go out there water your plants real thorough. Give them a good deep watering. That'll help the root systems and insulates it. Same thing with your turf grass. You know that could have helped. Right. And, and in some cases, you really can't do anything about it. Right. It's just you're going to have to get to that acceptance factor <laughs> <laughs> that grass is just not going to look good this year. Right. Yeah. Just, yep. Same thing with fruit trees. Don't expect peaches to produce much this year. My orange, my uh, mm -hmm. citrus, same thing. Yeah. You know. You know, we, we have a. But I did water my citrus. I sprayed yeah. it down you sprayed before it down. the freeze. Good. Yeah. You see, and I bet you it's a lot further along than most. I'm and, sure it is. Yeah. And you may get a couple out of it. Oh, that'd be nice <laughs> if I got a few. If I got a few. Yeah. But you know, most of the things I've you know, I've got people that send me pictures of peaches and pears and this, and, and everybody just I think sometimes expects a little too much. Mm -hmm. But and and that's maybe not knowing the fact that how much weather does affect, you know, not not just production now, but production in the future, whether it be turf grass or ornamental plants or fruit and nut type plants. It gives it gives me an appreciation for farmers because I mean <laughs> their whole livelihood is based on, mm -hmm. on weather. Weather. Whether or not. Whether or not, yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, a, a whole new appreciation for them because I mean I might lose a few tomato plants or something, but they're going to lose their livelihood. Yeah. So anyway, that's true. That's very true. That is exactly right. You know, we kind of try to always, you know, touch all those bases and make sure, sure that people understand that, you know, uh, we've got a great production system. You know, one of the things I kind of, you know, I always kind of giggle when I'm looking at some of those photos of people's lawn. And, right. You know, and I, and I see kind of like the last one I saw, it was almost a perfect square. You know, yes. and when you have a dead area that's a perfect square, that really tells you that either the bugs are absolutely smarter than we think they are. <laughs> or they, they know right angles. They, they know right just, angles right, and they uh, can do it. Or uh, somebody really had the intent or accidental intent of, of, of doing something either good or bad right. uh, in that area. Uh, it's, it's, it's cut and dry is kind of the way I like to say yeah. it. Um, you know, you, you've got to... You've got to be careful what you do, no matter what it is. And and it was, you know, as I was watching, you know, the, kind of some of the comments and everything came through on, oh, it could be brown patch. Oh, it could be take all. It could mm -hmm. be chinch bug. It could be grub related. Right. Um, you know, okay, let's take those independently. Okay. Brown right. patch. When does it typically happen? In the in the fall, I mean, in the spring, when, in spring and spring and summer, in, in fall when in it gets fall, cool, when it gets there, yeah, cool temperatures, you yeah. get the yellowish appearance to your grass, mm -hmm. and then it kind of yeah, it doesn't look good. Well, automatically, I can tell you right now, they go out and they start to get that. They go and pull those brown pieces. If they separate, yeah, from the actual growing point that's at the base of that green grass, mm -hmm. it separates there. That's brown patch. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we already know what to look for. All right. So there you go. So also what happens is you could potentially have, and, and we started to see June bugs not too long ago. Right. Um, in fact, they should be having larval stages in the ground right now. Yep, I've and found so already. there could be an issue, but I don't think they're smart enough to make squares. Oh, I don't think so either. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so, so we know that, okay, so that kind of rules that one out possibly. Right. Uh, but if we really want to get scientific with it, we go and dig a square footage area that's in a good and bad part. It means you have good grass and bad. Right. And you would dig and you would find over five ground pearls or, or, or grub worms uh -huh. per square foot. Right. Okay. And that is a sign of treatment, which that's using integrated pest management skills mm -hmm. to say that is a threshold, which it would damage the plant to lose or kill that plant. So, okay. So now we know brown patch and we know grubs. Grubs. Okay. So, so now chinch bugs. Chinch bugs do not attack grass until the heat of the summer when grass is stressed. Right. From the heat, from the sun, and typically those are what areas? Quiz. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the hottest. The hottest, yeah. Yeah. The next hottest to, part of the yard. Yep. Is right next to that. concrete. Yeah. Right. Stuff like that. So, okay, well, we're not there yet. Nope. <laughs> I haven't so, hit it yet. And this is, all, this is all what goes through my mind when I see these grass problems. I just click, click, mm -hmm. click, 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 done. Okay, now we got take all. Now I will say this: I have seen some grasses with take all actually started already, mm -hmm. but it hasn't reached mass enough 
to really cause issues with turf grass. Right. So take all patches a fungus right. that gets on the runners and the stolons in the root system. And once it gets vibrant enough, I guess, mm -hmm. it pierces into the stolon and reduces the movement of water and nutrients. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that's why you all of a sudden have green and it kind of turns to lime and then all of a sudden you got dead. Right. Okay. That typically is in that late summer pattern. Right. So it's the wrong time. Wrong time of year. So I'm seeing some instances of leftovers from last year mm -hmm. um, that have occurred, but then you have some regrowth already occurring. So I'm, I'm expecting a pretty decent year for take all. Right. Um, so, you know, we got to watch that. And, and so that rules that out. Right. And so now I'm looking at, okay, operator error. <laughs> what, uh, have, yeah. what have we done? Right. You know, I got, we covered the environmental issues. So what have we done to contribute to it? Right. And, and misuse is typically what happens. Um, and I had an old boss that was an ag agent. And he always told me, he said, sometimes, Mr. Potter, he said, you just need to dig a little deeper. And eventually, <laughs> they'll concede that they've done something wrong. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, people don't like to admit they've yeah. done something wrong. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and it goes yeah. back that that, so that gratification, we want it green now. Yes, yes. And that doesn't always happen. Okay. Yeah, and it doesn't. You know, and it, and it takes time. Um, I, I had a, uh, two interns this year brought me some soil test results. Mm -hmm. Live very close to each other. Two very different results. One needed absolutely nothing. And I'm thinking, wow, with all the rain and everything, she needed nothing. Right. And this was her lawn. And the other one was your typical 312 type, you know. Sure. You know what the difference was? No one. The one that needed nothing has been using a mulching mower for 12 years. So she's leaving the grass clippings on the on the grass. So the, the grass clippings are actually fertilizing the grass. Exactly. That's it, smart. Amazing. Ama just that simple thing. Just that simple thing. But, you know, that's building a soil over time. Right. And, and, and a lot of people don't have that patience to do that. And there's some quicker ways to do that. And, you know, we can talk about that, you know aerating and, and then top dressing with compost and things right. like that. Uh, so, you know, there's some cool things. And, and, and maybe a little later, maybe we could read this little kind of joke with, with, with oh, yeah. to me. That's, yeah, I'd <laughs> like to hear that one. It's kind of the reality of it. It's That's... kind of a reality check, you know. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we've, you know, seen, I've seen damage of, of fruit trees, too, uh, that people have got fruit trees in their backyard or something like that, and they they spread out their herbicides or something, you know, and it, it gets to them. It, you know, some of those things just affect root systems, and you, you just got to live with that. Right. That's kind of why we also recommend not doing it, because it takes out the human error part. <laughs> I see, yeah, I agree. <laughs> just saying, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. It's one of those things. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a quick break, and, and we'll come back. Uh, you're listening to the Extension Hour here at FM 104.5. Uh, 106.1. You're listening to Lone Star Community Radio, and you can listen live at IRLoneStar.com if you'd like. We'll be back in a minute. A Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for summer internship opportunities, a Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to grab the mic and be on the air. A Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world all year round. Be an on-air personality, talk show producer, or YouTube TV podcast editor. Contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776. All right, welcome back. I'm here with Bob Daly. Mike. Always a pleasure to have you around. Glad to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I always look forward to being able to do a radio show with you because we just kind of blend well. I think so, yeah. I think we we're, we're going to, later on in the summer, we're going to try to do one with uh, with one of our other water guys in our extension office. I talked to him here this last week, and he oh, said, great. man, he's willing to jump in and come in here with us. And I, Fantastic. I, I think it'll be a party at that point. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Um, not too long ago, uh, you know, I've got about 378 volunteers in our organization, right. Master Gardeners here, and uh, somebody sent me this uh, 
this kind of kind of a little joke. It's it, it's it's uh, it's kind of funny, and for us people that are in the the horticulture side and have to deal with grass problems, it, it was quite sure. quite cute and comical for me. Uh, the uh, it. it it, it's it's kind of cool. So I, I'm I want to hear it. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it here. So uh, yeah, it's a God to Saint Francis. Frank, you know all about gardens and nature. What in the world is going on down there on the planet? What happened to the dandelions, the violets, the milkweeds, and stuff I started eons ago? I had a perfect no maintenance garden plan. Those plants grow in any type of soil, withstand drought, and multiply with abandon. The nectar from all those long lasting blossoms attracts butterflies, honeybees, and flocks of songbirds. I expected to see a vast garden of colors by now, but all I see are these green rectangles. Hmm. Hmm. It's the tribes that settled there, Lord. The suburbanites. <laughs> they started calling your flowers weeds and went to great lengths to kill them and replace them with grass. Uh-huh. Grass? But that's so boring. It's not colorful. It doesn't attract bees, butterflies, birds. Only grubs and sodworms. It's sensitive to temperatures. Do these suburbanites really want all that grass growing there? And uh, St. Francis said, apparently so, Lord. Uh, they go to great pains to grow it and keep it green. They begin each spring with fertilizing grass and poisoning any other plants that crops up in the lawn. <laughs> the spring rains and warm weather probably make grass grow really fast, God says. That must make the suburbanites happy. St. Francis said, apparently not, Lord. As soon as it grows... A little, they cut it, sometimes twice a week. (laughs) God says, they cut it. Do they bale it like hay? St. Francis, not exactly, Lord. Most of them rake it up and put it in bags. (laughs) They bag it? Why? Is it a cash crop? Do they sell it? No, sir. Just the opposite. They pay to throw it away. (laughs) Now, just let me get this straight. They fertilize so it will grow. And when it does grow, they cut it off and pay to throw it away. Yes, sir. These suburbanites must be relieved in the summer when they when we cut back on the rain and turn up the heat. That surely slows the growth and saves them a lot of work. Well, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when the grass stops growing so fast, they drag out hoses and pay more money to water it. <laughs> so they continue to mow it and pay to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> what nonsense. At least they kept some of the trees. That was a sheer stroke of genius, if I say so myself. The trees grow leaves in the spring and provide beauty and shade in the summer. In the autumn, they fall to the ground and form natural blankets to keep moisture in the soil and protect the trees and bushes. It's a natural cycle of life. Basically mulch. Yeah. You'd better sit down, Lord. These <laughs> suburbanites have drawn a new circle. <laughs> As soon as the leaves fall, they rake them up in the great piles and pay to have them hauled off, too. (laughs) No. What do they do to protect the shrubs and tree roots in the winter and keep the soil moist and loose? After throwing away the leaves, he says, they go out and buy something which is called mulch. (laughs) They haul it home and spread it around in uh, in place of the leaves. And where do they get this mulch? They cut down trees and grind them to make the mulch. <laughs> Enough. I don't think want to think about this anymore. St. Catherine, you're in charge of the arts. What movie have you scheduled for us tonight? Dumb and Dumber, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's a story about, and he says, never mind. I think I've heard the whole story from St. Brad. <laughs> And That's it is kind great. of comical, yeah, you know? Yeah, but it's true. It's true. It's true. You know, we're always looking for the greener pasture, and, and the fact is, is that there's a life cycle out there, and there's something that's environmentally friendly to do, and we're not taking advantage of it. Sure. Um, you know, I always make this comment whenever I talk about turf grass is that, you know, especially up here, we get enough rain to sustain turf grass growth throughout the entire year. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah, that's now, true. Now, there are periods of times where we do need to supplement water. Right. But that's the only reason irrigation out of the hose should be used. I, You know, I, I looked up at the little town of Frisco, which is north of Dallas. Right. And they put out a report last year. Mm-hmm. They said that of 365 days, they only needed to water 28 days because of the rainfall. Mm-hmm. So, And they're basically the same as us, maybe a little drier than us, actually. Up right. There. Yeah, just a little dry. It's, yeah. It, you know, and the whole thing is, is that, when grass is dormant, 
does it need to be watered? Well, that's going to cause fungal infections, right? Right. So, yeah, well, I, I saw Too people. Too much water. I saw people turning on their sprinkler, you know, irrigation systems in February, early February. Yep, I did too. Grass yep. is not growing. Yep. But yet we're putting water up on it. Right. It, so it just doesn't make we're sense. We're feeding the fungus. Yeah, exactly. We're feeding the fungus and losing the water. Right. We're basically taking the water we should be drinking and putting it back. Well, it's going somewhere. I mean, if you want to pay to put it back in the aquifer, that's good. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll take 40,000 years, years for it to, to get, get there. down there. Yeah. <laughs> that's an investment. What a, yeah. One of the things I noticed, uh, oh, I did that, that talk the other day, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things I noticed, lawns are the fourth largest crop yep. in Texas. Yep. That's totally amazing to mm -hmm. me. I mean, it's bigger than corn. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's there's other studies out there that I know you're aware of about, you know, how much water is wasted on landscapes every year. Like 80 percent sometimes, mm -hmm. as high as 80 percent. That's you know, amazing. That's, you know, that's, that's something, you know, we, we try to do an extension. We, you know, we try to recommend, you know, adequate mulch, proper right. irrigation methods, you know, utilizing drip irrigation in the landscape. Um, you know, four to six inches of mulch is a good thing. You know, if somebody wanted to see how that drip irrigation works, mm -hmm. They can come over to Extension and look at those gardens because they're all drip irrigation. Yes, in fact, good point because that was one of the things I was supposed to write down today. Oh, on May twentieth, we have an open garden day at the Extension office. Ha. Uh -huh. Okay. Great. Yep, and uh, that will be from uh, we're, we're doing that one from uh, nine to noon. Okay, and uh, that's a Saturday. That's right? a Saturday, nine to noon on May twentieth, and uh, a lot of our master gardeners who actually work in the gardens, our area managers, and and they will all be there answering questions. I'll be there answering questions and, 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 you know, having people tour the gardens and they can, you know, really look and see, you know, what rainwater harvesting looks like on you a know, large scale and a small scale. Were there nine rainwater harvesting tanks now at the oh, at extension? I'm, I'm thinking yeah. nine, but yeah. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I think so. We've got two, uh, three, let's see, we've got 6,000 gallons back there by the earth kind. Right. We've got another 500 up front. I think another. Was that 2,500? Yeah. The thousand up in front on the, the the same side, right? Then we've got, I think, another two fifty or three hundred that's attached to the aquaponics. Okay, yeah, then one I got about that. Yeah, yeah, one next to the building, uh, that's the extension office building. One there, and then the four eight the four over on the the master gardener building over there. That's eight thousand gallons. That, that's all. Oh, and and all that <laughs> most of that's used mm -hmm. for for uh, yeah it's for all drip used. irrigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and it, and it's you know it, it's it's uh, it's an interesting concept, and 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 I wish more people would kind of latch onto it. I wish people would go and see that see the operation yeah. of it. Just yeah. the aquaponics at, uh, oh, yeah. is just fantastic. But oh yeah, that's a thing out there. Is, that's a recycle system. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. Yeah. And uh, you I see know, you put another tank of fish in there too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. We nice. got two different systems going. Uh, there's a you know one that it just kind of as the fish eat, of course they have residue, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's what we call it. Right, um, and that feeds the plants, uh, and it and it's just a circle system where it just keeps flushing that water through, and as the you know fish eat, the the nutrients and everything go through and feed the plants, and uh, it's a pretty sustainable process. I saw you had terracotta pots in there, and those so the, the water seeping in through the the nutrients and mm -hmm. the water seeping in through from those, underneath, from yeah. underneath. Yeah, and it's just a, it's basically a, a, a closed box, and it has a a gravel type base in it and that water just kind of comes up and percolates up from the bottom up and it, and it provides all the nutrients and and everything for i think people be amazed out yeah. there i mean we keep bees yeah we have bees yeah. bees plenty uh, of bees plenty of bees mm -hmm. and uh so there's there's a beekeeping operation there's aquaponics there's gardens mm -hmm. uh Texas uh, Earth Kind. Mm -hmm. We got the Earth Kind experiment. Earth kind. There's there's the research one that we're doing on rosemaries out there. I saw this that our one, second yeah. year on yeah. that one. That's amazing. Yep. And we got the new brand new. And in fact, it's it's almost I think it's like ninety nine point five percent completed. Um, they're just now putting the slats, uh, the bent slats around the uh, the the uh, the rainwater tanks. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's almost oh. completely finished. See, that'll be really nice. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. And then you got the raised gardens on the other side, the handicapped the garden gardens. area. Yeah, and, and then the vegetable gardens. Yeah, the vegetable gardens and yeah, the the well, the adaptive gardens. Adaptive gardens, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and that's you know to show people that there are different methods of, of, of building beds to allow accessibility. Sure. Um, and then the floral gardens, which is a huge part of the extension. And then the native plant garden on mm -hmm. the other side. On the other side, that's right. And, and the course, children's garden. Yeah, we got children's garden right there in front of the extension, the yeah. uh, master gardener building. So yeah, and we'll have a. In fact, I just secured it today. There's a, a stream trailer 
it's a trailer that we have at the uh, at our district office over in College Station. I might have to go pick it up and bring it over for the event. But right. it, we can show how water, how you know how things impact our water systems. Oh wow! They got some several displays, and it's a whole trailer. So I'm going to bring that to the. To the that will be office. nice. Anybody interested in gardening should see this oh, yes. operation. Yes, it's it, fantastic. Yeah, and we do all kinds of different stuff, and it's an opportunity for people to come out and ask. You know, hey, you know, why do you do this? You know, why do you use? Why are these purple pipes out here? Right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> what's purple pipe? Well, purple yeah. pipe, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. Why are these purple? Why are these brown? Well, that's right. the stuff you don't want to drink. Right. But, you know, it, it, those purple pipes have the, uh, they, they come off the rainwater harvesting tank. And interestingly, the rainwater harvesting tanks, uh, the rainwater that's in there is good water, mm-hmm. it's clean water, clean. and it's got nitrogen in it. That's right. You know, so, I mean, it, what a great thing. Yes, yeah. it is. It it's is. beautiful. Yeah, I've uh, I've had several several inquiries here this last week, and I've given people tours. You know, they they want to do similar things at their house, and it's one of the comments was, you know, why couldn't we do this on a very large scale? I was like, well, that's probably not so feasible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to turn Lake Conroe into a parking lot just that's, so we can collect yeah. water. You know? <laughs> if you, if you do something in that large a scale, right, you're not going to recharge your aquifers, which is where we get that's our exactly primary right. source of water. Yeah. So yeah, you have to think about things on that that you perspective. Know, We've got some other stuff. Uh, the uh, you've got an aquaponics seminar coming up, rainwater harvesting, mm-hmm. uh, bees mm-hmm. uh, coming up this summer. I think people would really be interested in those yep. things. And, and a lot of a lot of these events are announced on the mcmga.com website, or you can call the office at nine three six five three nine seven eight two four. Our our master gardeners answer the phones over there, and they'll be right. you know able to help you. Uh, and, and they're there every day. That's right, every day, eight to twelve, one to five. So it's a it's a good opportunity. It's free. That's the whole thing. We're, we're research-based information. So you're listening to Extension Hour. I'm Michael Potter. I'm Bob Daly. There we go. <laughs> and we got FM 104.5 and 106.1, IRLonStar.com. We'll be back in a short minute. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Good afternoon. You're listening to the Extension Hour. I'm Michael Potter. I'm Bob Daly. Hey, man, well, I tell you what, it, it, it never fails. We're always indoors when it's great outside. I know. That's I know. okay. It's so beautiful. That's there. okay. We could be doing yard work. That's, the, yes, you're right. <laughs> exactly. Don't ever come to a horticulturist's house and expect to see beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Just It's like the it, cobbler's children. The, the cobbler's children. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, the only thing that is good on my house is my yard. I almost yeah. took a picture of it and said, you know, we got to post this or something just to see it. Because you could look at my house and you could look at my neighbors. You yeah. know, they water, you know, they do different things. And, of course, the other thing that impacts yards, too, and I, I forget, failed to mention this earlier, big lawnmowers with big wheels that are heavy. Compaction. Compaction, Soil yeah. compaction. And so one of, ways to, one of the ways to alleviate that is, is, is some type of aeration. Um, a core aerator is the best way to do it. Uh, and then shortly after a core aeration, you know, adding some kind of compost or or organic matter right it, that fills those holes also helps. so uh uh the core area you can rent those can't you mm-hmm. yeah you, you can, can rent, rent them at certain places and, and and what it does is it pulls up about you know a little plug out of the out of the ground right the soil and grass and everything it'll pull it all out and then it leaves an air air space and that's very important because those roots need air is that what the golf courses do yes exactly you hit it right on you've hit the note yeah that's exactly what they do in fact that makes a lot of golfers really mad <laughs> <laughs> because of the, the, the little plugs that right. it yeah, it, yeah. It, it affects the putting surface. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So. I, you know, that's like putt-putt. I mean, you yeah, got obstacles. Yeah. I mean, figure uh, it out. Come on. That's no. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where recently uh, we, we're going to host, uh, our county agents association is going to host a state conference for all the agents in Texas here in 2019. And uh, they put me in charge of golf. And I said, look, guys, I'm a horticulturalist, <laughs> but I really don't play golf. I fish. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. they're like, they, they all looked at me like, really? <laughs> I was like, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I do occasionally uh, swing the ball, but I'm afraid to play up here because the trees are too tall. Uh, I can't uh, get over uh, them. 
<laughs> and most of the time hit them. So, you know, in fact, the first time I ever played up here well, was... good targets. Yeah, play. exactly. Well, the first time I ever played up here was uh, when y'all hosted the Master Gardener State Conference. Right, yes. And uh, the first, the, I, the, I was talking to one of the, the husbands of the, of the Master Gardener, and I said, you know, I said, uh, he said, you play? I said, well, occasionally I do play. And we, I said, the one thing I, I, I don't know about up here is the trees. And he said, well... You may not want to look at the first hole. <laughs> and it was a dog leg right, and I said, well, that'll, that'll play to my slice. Well, right. obviously, I didn't go long enough because I ended up right in the middle of the trees, and it, you could hear it flopping around in there. So, But uh, it, it meant for some challenging <laughs> golf for me. I never got a good bounce where it popped me back in the fairway. So, Yeah, I'm afraid I'll kill somebody out there. I go fishing <laughs> instead. But, yeah, that that's one of those things. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, we've got – you know, insect issues. We're going to have a lot of issues this year just right. because of our weather pattern. It's it's just, that's the way it is. It's been a real strange spring. Right. And, it, of course, it was a weird winter, too. Yeah. I mean, here, you know, we had a cold front. You know, we are 40-some-odd degrees here a couple of weeks ago in the morning, you know. It, that's right, yeah. It, it's just, you know, yeah, it's the roller coaster ride. I, mean, I think he said it was going to be 59. Yeah, exactly. Uh, tonight, that's unbelievable that's not going to be very fun for kayaking early in the morning i don't think so <laughs> especially when i don't have any drain holes to plug <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah well, well. <laughs> i'll suffer through it yeah <laughs> it's fishing what a you know what the heck so you know there there are a lot of environmental problems that affect you know a lot of the plants um you know blights i think you blight, said you've, yeah you, you've seen some issues yeah with and my, especially my tomatoes yeah yeah i've seen yeah. some blight yeah yeah and and it's just uh you know it's environmental it's there's not much we can do uh, ex, you know, when it's when we're exposed to the elements, right? Like plants are, uh, there's only certain things you have control of, right? So you know, how do you do that? You know, if, if you planted your your tomatoes too close and there's no airflow, um, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, right? That's if you don't right. trim your peach trees correctly to where there is airflow, you're gonna have you know problems. That's right. So, so there's 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 all these types of practices I think that 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 a lot of people aren't aware of. And those are just good gardening practices, mm-hmm. just good. Right. And, and we'll have those. Sensible dem- stuff. We'll have demonstrations of that at the extension office. Oh, wow. We have Before. got in our orchard area. Um, on the 20th. Yes, sir. On the 20th uh, from 9 to noon. Uh, we'll have an area out in there that you'll actually be able to see what the recommended natural way to trim trees. Yes. Versus a, versus a wild plant it in the ground, let it grow how it wants to grow. Right. Versus a high density planting. Which is actually three trees within about a square foot area. Really? Yeah. And so you, you got three peach trees. Yeah. Okay. And you basically still trim a center to make them. Oh, like a so bowl. it's like yeah. yeah. Okay. You still do it, but it, it's a high density, so you can have basically three different peaches. Nice. That's yeah. a good idea. I so, like that. Yeah. And there's yeah. a we have, we do have one area there that's in between some of the uh, uh, that's between the uh, grapes, uh, which we have Victoria yeah. red grapes growing. I saw them. Oh my gosh, they're. Got some muskie dogs oh, going out there, yep. too. Yeah. yeah, there is a, I mean, I can't I wait. I saw those big plumes of grapes. They're just fantastic. They are going to be mad at me when they start to ripen. <laughs> <laughs> they are not going to. Give, give me a call. I'll go help you. <laughs> Come on, Bob, let's <laughs> time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's a row in there that, that's between those two rows uh-huh. of the fruit trees and that, that we've got um, a, a, a turf grass that it's kind of underutilized, but it's, it's, a, it's a Bermuda. It's, right, it's celebration. That. Yes, yeah, it's called celebration. Celebration. So we're looking at it, and you know, it's the kind of the first year, you know, looking at it, and we're, we're yeah. just evaluating it, see how it does in our in our environment. Sure. And uh, I know you had talked about doing some some uh, some uh, grass research mm-hmm. and experiments over there. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's one of them. Yeah, that's one of them, and and you know, we've got some stuff. We got composting area. Uh, that one's soon to be moved. We're going to move that out, actually. I'm giving up some of my turf grass area. Are you? Are they yeah. Move the compost down yeah. there. Yeah, so we can put it out front so people can really see a, an active compost. I, that's a great idea. Yeah, instead of being way back in the back. That's a great idea. Yeah. So you it, know, I compost and I love yeah. it. I mean, I just you know, I get so much. I don't have to go buy it. Yeah. I don't have to go bring my mm-hmm. to pay to haul my leaves away and then go yep. buy it from them. I make my yep. own. Exactly. So you know, we've we've got kind of a neat area there that's yeah it's still under development at that point but uh you know the big herb area our the bog garden, garden is beautiful mm-hmm. the, bog garden. the bog garden oh it's really nice yeah we're gonna we're gonna change that up too really that one side where you dump the mulch on the uh-huh. other side yeah unfortunately it was just designed that way we're gonna actually remove that side of it put it over there by the compost 
Well, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And then now we're going to beautify that. So. Oh, that'll right. be beautiful. So, you know, it's like little things that we're doing here. Yeah. And uh, so we're making changes as we go along and, and addressing some of the issues, you know, with, with water conservation, you know, all those types of things. Environmental right. stewardship. Right. You know, uh, you know, a lot of people, I, in fact, I saw somebody mention in, in one of the little social media things about they had uh, Virginia buttonweed. Right. And, and the guy had evidently, he, he'd done his research because he, he said, oh, there's this product called, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it was. And I, I said, yeah, that's, yeah, good product. It's a, it's, you can't buy it over the counter here. Right. right. You can buy it somewhere else. And, and, and I, I wanted to say, by the way, <laughs> there's these other products, but, you know, I, that, that, I can't do that. Right, exactly. I, I can't single out a, a. I can say what the active ingredient is. Right, and then they can do their own research right. about and, it. And then so. you know, and the thing is, I always express to people, please read the label. Right, you know, it, it's important. Uh, you you can cause more issues by over applying something. Uh, oh God, those I've done it. Fungicides, even. Um, you know, it's just little things. Uh, yeah. But we, like I said, we tend to want instant gratification. Yep. You know, if I'm going to put a fertilizer out, I want it to, my green, my grass to be green the next day, right? Simple as that. We don't. One of the things I was thinking about is that I don't know if everybody knows how to get to Extension, if they're going to come on the 20th or any time. Correct. Yeah. Basically, uh, whether if you're coming from like the Woodlands or South, come up I-45 and exit uh, Tees Road, which is actually 3083, FM 3083, and go east about 3.2 miles. Uh, and that's uh, and and you'll run into Airport Road, and it's okay. right there by the Lone Star Convention Center. And it, basically, you'll take a left on Airport Road, and we're right there on the right hand side. Right. And it's Texas A&M Agri Life Extension. And what's the phone number for y'all again? Yeah, the phone number is nine three six five three nine seven eight two four. And like I said, our master gardeners are there, eight to twelve, one to five, Monday through Friday. Uh, answer questions. They they help me out. They're basically an extension of and that's some really bright people. My appendages. <laughs> yes. So you have, a, you have a lot of smart appendages. <laughs> exactly. Too, yeah. You know, they go through a rigorous training. Uh, they do. 84 it's hours of classroom. It's a college degree. Mm -hmm. Basically right. Yeah. It's a basically right. So, you know, we do our best. You're listening to Texas A&M Life Extension Hour here with Bob Daly. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here with it's you. It's a pleasure, Mike. And I just I enjoy it every time. Uh, FM 104.5, 106.1. And uh, IRLoneStar.com uh, Community Radio. And thanks for joining us today, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you sometime soon. Thanks for checking out this recording from Lone Star Community Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station and broadcasted live from Conroe, Texas on IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. Interested in sponsoring this show, being a guest, hosting your own show? Then please visit us online at IRLoneStar.com and check out the Contact Us page. We want to say thank you to our studio supporters. Our traffic sponsor, Conroe Americana Music Festival at ConroeAmericanaMusicFestival.com. For more information about this show, please check out the information below in the description. 